Welcome to Electron Line. Our third property is what we call the time shift property for the Fourier transform. What that means is if we have an input function and we change the timing on it, we delay the input function itself, that will cause a phase shift in the Fourier transform in the frequency domain. How do we prove that? How do we show that? Well, let's go ahead and try to take the Fourier transform of a function that's been shifted in time to the right by a certain amount of t sub naught. And so when we plug it into our general equation, instead of f of t, we write f of t minus t sub naught. Now, to be able to integrate that, we're going to make a substitution. We're going to let x be t minus t sub naught, so this now becomes a function of x. And then, of course, we have to take care of the rest. So dx, d, dx becomes dt, and t becomes x plus t sub naught, which is just a constant. So let's go ahead and plug that in and see what we get. So this is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity. And notice that since x is simply equal to t with some constant change, then, of course, the limits will not change as well. And so now we have f of x. And then we have e to the minus j omega. And instead of t, we're now going to write x plus t sub naught. And then dt becomes dx. Now, of course, since this is an exponential and we have a sum here, that means the same thing as this. So this can now be written as the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x. And now this can be written as the product e to the minus j, yep, I have a minus j omega x, and then e to the minus j omega t sub naught, j omega t sub naught, and then we have a dx instead of dt. And of course, realizing that this here now is just a constant quantity, which it's not a function of x, it's a function of omega t sub naught, so we can go ahead and take that outside integral sign, so this becomes equal to e to the minus j, oop, there should be a j, omega t sub naught, so let's get rid of this j here, that's a better one, times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x, and then we still have e to the minus j omega x dx, and of course that's the general equation of a Fourier transform, so that can be replaced by, over here, we can replace it by that, so this becomes equal to e to the minus j omega t sub naught times the Fourier function of the frequency. So you can see that all we have to do is make a shift in time on the input function, and we'll get a shift in the frequency on the output of the transform. And that's how we do that.